This configuration can produce the condition shown wherein a parasitic capacitance is generated between both sensor pads. A good rule of thumb when laying out your design is to ensure that areas underneath touch sensor pads are kept clear of traces altogether. Some other things to consider as they pertain to circuit traces. Whenever possible, traces should be kept as small as possible and positioned away from ground sources and other traces. This will minimize the occurrence of unwanted parasitic capacitance or inadvertently coupling sensors together. We have covered some basic design guidelines for touchpad sensors. Let's now look at the covering plate that will provide the touch surface in our application. Sensor sensitivity will vary with thickness and composition of the material used. In capacitive sensing applications, it has been found that extremely thin plate thicknesses make for a more accurate and sensitive sensor. Referring back to the capacitance equation, we can clearly see one reason why. As the denominator representing the distance between our two plates increases, the capacitance will become smaller. The capacitive M-touch sensing system has been tested and found to work well with window glass and plexiglass thicknesses of 2 mm to 5 mm. Other materials could be used. However, attention must be paid to the dielectric constant of the material. As we saw earlier in this web seminar, covering plate thicknesses will also directly impact the area variable in our capacitance equation. For example, as the covering plate thickness increases, notice that the difference in area of the nearby sensor actually approaches that of the target sensor in relation to the finger. Therefore, for optimal designs, the thinner the covering plate material, the better. An important consideration when choosing a material for a covering plate is its permittivity, or dielectric constant. This constant defines the amount of electrostatic energy, or electric field, that can be stored by a material when a given voltage is applied to it. As we can see in the capacitance equation, a higher dielectric constant produces a greater capacitance. Some dielectric constants for commonly used covering plate materials are plexiglass defined at approximately 2.25 to 3.5 and glass between 4 to 8 depending on the type of glass used. As you could probably guess, considering the dielectric constant shown here, glass can maintain higher capacitances with greater thicknesses than could covering plates made of plexiglass. Dielectric constants for materials are readily available. Let's take a moment and look at some other considerations for a capacitive M-touch sensing design. What about water on the touch surface of our application? Water has an extremely high permittivity of 70 to 75 in liquid form and around 2 to 3 if frozen. Therefore, water drops on a touch surface has a potential of being sensed as a sensor button press. Water covering a number of buttons could trigger multiple presses. Furthermore, touching a water puddle spanning multiple sensors could set them all off. Microchip suggests a percentage-based voting routine described in the application note AN1103, Software Handling for Capacitive Sensing, referenced at the end of this web seminar. By averaging in the relaxation oscillator frequency to the steady state environment, false triggers can be minimized. Ultimately, the best solution is tilting the complete system in environments prone to water to allow drainage off of the touch surface. Certain covering materials may also be used that cause water to bead. However, dielectric constants for any additional materials must be carefully considered. Similarly, ketchup and mustard could cause false triggers due to their high moisture content. Especially in a splatter type environment, a downward shift similar to a finger press can occur. The same averaging techniques described for overcoming false triggers due to water can also be used here. Alternately, you may consider using a press and release detection scheme. 
Here, a specific window of time is used in which a press and release must occur. Anything too fast or too slow is not considered a press. One solution incorporates an algorithm in which an LED lights with the user's touch, but an action is not registered in software until the user releases the press. Another design practice to consider would be to mount devices such as the PIC MCU on the opposite side of the printed circuit board to the sensors to create a flash or flush surface to accommodate covering plate and minimizing air gaps. Again, avoid placing parts directly beneath the sensors. Centrally locating components may make routing traces easier and minimize disrupting sensor traces. Let's take a moment and discuss how we would package all of these components together into our final application. There are many ways to put together a completed system. This is simply one of them. You may choose an alternate method. This construction sandwich begins with the printed circuit board and sensors. Next, a layer of paper is placed over the pads with graphics to indicate button locations. This is an inexpensive method that gives the designer freedom to produce an end product that aesthetically complements its environment. Alternately, you may consider silk screening the bottom side of the cover plate. The construction sandwich is then secured using an adhesive such as glue or double-sided tape to give a clean look to the design. Using an adhesive of some sort will minimize air spaces between each layer which will optimize the capacitance of the system. Let's summarize what we have covered in this web seminar. During the course of this web seminar, we have looked at a number of design guidelines to optimize your capacitive M-Touch sensing application. Careful consideration must be taken, especially during the layout stage of the printed circuit. Sensor size, placement, and connectivity to other components will ultimately make or break the application. Covering plate materials and thicknesses must be chosen to optimize sensitivity of the system to a user's touch, while minimizing interference with other sensors. Some suggestions were offered in the final packaging of the design. The designer may find that other packaging methods better suit their application. For more information on Microchip's capacitive M-Touch sensing solution, please refer to the application notes listed here. Future web seminar topics will include software algorithms, multi-button configurations, and an overview of the M-Touch software development kit. You may also be interested in visiting the M-Touch Design Center at www.microchip.com slash mtouch. Here you will find links to the most current information and resources for this technology. My name is Mark McComb and I thank you for viewing this web seminar.